I want to give you just a little bit of the history of breeding. Teaching of breeding and what, where it is and where it's going and where it's coming from. There are several theories of language learning. <laughs> Thank you. There are several theories of language learning that affect the theories of reading and processing written language. You need to know this to understand what's happening. Secondary ed people, you need to know this as well. Understand the theories and the strategies of teaching in the secondary school now. So I'm going to try and go through this as quickly as possible. You need to write this down unless you already know it. The first model is a behavioristic model, and that is really a classical theory that you know about. You, you know Skinner, you have that all figured out, you've studied it, and you know that it's a stimulus response model. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. And then another big component is reinforcement. This theory of language learning is that language is a behavior building up the simplest behaviors first and gradually working up to more complex behaviors. Basically, the child is mimicking the adult and learning through trial and error. He's always, re -speaking. He's always seeking a response from the adult or the outside world to reinforce his speech. It is only through practice that the child learns to speak. However, we are left with the problem of how the child comes to realize the proper relationships between sounds and meaning. How does he arrive at the principles of ordering the words properly and parts of words so that they make sense? Yes. I'm asking you to think about it. overview of all of these. It's really fast. All right. We're going to quickly go to another theory. That's your behavior. This is very fast. We can go back and talk about it. The second theory I want you to understand is the nativist theory of learning language. The nativist point of view is new. In 1966 <coughs> and in 1968, a man named Noam Chomsky from MIT, he's still alive today, <laughs> MIT, he's there today, you could go talk to him in his office. Noam Chomsky wrote books, Syntactic Structures, Language and Mind, etc., books that I've read that you wouldn't want to read. Very interesting. And he, he is a pioneer in the work of transformational grammar, and he's revolutionized modern linguistics. He states that there is an innate, complex, genetically programmed perceptual and cognitive mechanism for language acquisition in humans. That's a quote, so don't panic. You'll read things like that when you go to graduate school, and it's not that bad, it's fun. Very interesting. And here I have that quote that I wrote out on an overhead for you. There is an innate, complex, genetically programmed perceptual 
and cognitive mechanism for language acquisition in humans. Now, when I was at the University of Chicago in the 1970s, Noam Chomsky kind of made history. He rocked the University of Chicago with this point of view. The old point of view was the behavioristic point of view <coughs> that children learn to speak, kind of like the chimpanzee. You know how they try to teach chimpanzees to talk and make different sounds that would communicate certain needs, etc. However, Chomsky says there's no way that a person can just be taught certain words and mimic adults and then come up with different language structures and word usages that are creative and unique to that human being. Tiffany, every sentence that you've ever spoken has never been spoken by any other human being. Are you only quoting your mother and father when you speak? No. You're taking the words that you've learned and what are you doing with them? You're creating a new sentence, I guess. You're creating new sentences. You're taking those words and putting them together very differently than Tony does and very differently than Rachel. Also, somehow or other, from the way we speak to one another, we have some idea of the order in which words should come. Now, for instance, if I speak French, of course my words will be in a different order, or Spanish, or English. And yet there's a grammatical structure that we learn very quickly and very easily as children. So Chomsky says, inside of us, there's some genetically programmed perceptual mechanism for language acquisition. And it's called an LAD, he ca they call it, a language acquisition device. Now this is no surprise to me, because I believe, as I stated earlier, that language is one way in which we are made in the image of God. This has revolutionized the way that we think about teaching and about language. And believe me, this has had effect with whole, the thought of whole language. Whole language believes that language is innate, natural, it's a part of being human. And so they, will, they do not, uh, and we'll talk, we'll talk about whole language, etc and what it doesn't mean, and what's not good about it, and what's good about it. But this sense that language is innate within human beings is new since the 1970s. Before that time, it was a behavioristic model that we had to learn to read or learn by building blocks of facts, building blocks of words, and mimicking adults. But we understand now and of course we knew that all along as believers, that language is something unique to humans and is an innate quality that's natural to us. And that's the innatest point of view. And you need to understand that. Every sentence that you speak or write, unless you are quoting someone, has never been said or will be said ever again in the history of the human race. Underlying the structure of words, there is a deep structure of meaning of what you say that is uniquely ours. It is our schema and our understanding that underlies what we said. If we all said, I went on a train ride, everyone say that. I went on a train ride. How many of you have been on a train ride? Now, when you said I went on a train ride, I envisioned that train ride. Now, do you all have the same meaning when you said I went on a train ride? What was your train ride like, Todd? Um, going out of Chicago. On the? On the metro, watching the fireworks. Okay. My train ride was up to uh, Minnesota to see my daughter at Bethel. What was your train ride? Where were you going? I was going downtown. Going downtown. Okay. All right. So every time we say something, it might have a specific meaning that's specific to us. So we could say the same words, 
But there's a deep structure of our experiences underneath those words. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That the behaviorist is not thinking about. Even a small child who says one word, cookie, 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 mommy, cookie. <laughs> what is the child saying? What's the deep structure? You want yeah, give me a cookie to eat. Yeah, that's right. You understand that, don't you? That's the deep structure. Okay. There's another theory. So that's, what was our first theory? Behavioristic. Behavioristic. The second theory? Behavioristic. And the third theory is the cognitive theory that children may be born to learn language as the innate is proposed. However, the language that is learned is determined by the social and linguistic environment into which the child is born and the language role models available. So in other words, it may be, a na it may be natively correct that I have this ability to speak naturally but it depends on my culture and my environment as to whether I speak French or Italian or English and the structures that I, that I use. So a cognitive psychologist combined the behavioristic and the nativist point of view together and say that they both work together to help a child learn to speak. And Vygotsky, who is a Russian, is a big theorist right now, and he is one of the men that I studied at University of Chicago. Uh, and we'll talk more about Vygotsky. The behavioristic, the nativist, and the cognitive theories work out in a specific way of teaching reading, and that is what we're going to talk, we're going to start with on Thursday. Just let me tell you, the behaviorist uh, works out in bottom-up theories. That would deal with learning facts, just building blocks of knowledge. Learning is just building blocks of knowledge. Learning to read is building blocks of sounds and words, period. A nativist, that uh, way of learning to read and understanding would be called the, guess what, the top-down theory where meaning comes first. Since language is natural, we have to read for meaning and make sure that meaning is part and parcel of what we talk about first before we read something. The cognitive theory comes down into the interactive model of teaching, which is what Mbaka and Baca believes in. The interactive model is what we will be talking about in this classroom, where reading is a <laughs> dialogue between the reader and the text, a constant working back and forth of my prior knowledge, my experiences, and what's in the text, and processing that. So we must go through those theories, and then uh, we'll talk about Daryl, and we'll talk about Ordeal by Check. Make sure that you read Chapter 1 on Thursday. <laughs>